What's up guys, I'm back for another video, and today I'm bringing back an old series that we were supposed to kind of do continuously, but it kind of dropped off after the Wolverine. It is basically me doing a discussion video on a newly released comic book film with a couple friends of mine. Coming back for this little series of ours is an old veteran of it, James Brady, a.k.a. Ronan Reviewer. Hi, how's it going? And another one you might have seen in a couple of other videos, specifically the Versus video I did with James about Brian Michael Bendis, Booty Ulet. Hello, everyone. And today we're going to be talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. You know that movie I've been giving a whole bunch of shit for pre-release, where now you guys can hear my thoughts on it. But first, I want to let these fine gentlemen give their two cents on the film so we can really dive into this son of a bitch. So... James, how'd you like this bad boy? Well, I actually, talk, I actually like to talk about um, kind of when it first got released, or when it first got announced. Because um, I, I, I had no idea this was actually going to be... A, okay, it got announced, and I thought, no way in hell is this actually going to happen. You know, I seriously like doubted that they were actually going to do it. I thought it was like a joke or something like that, or it was just... It was going to, like, gonna get, like, die in, like, um... What do you call it? Um, like kind of production hell. Mm -hmm. uh, I seriously had no idea. I, I had no kind of like belief that this thing was actually going to get made. Um, mm -hmm. So like you know, number one, that was like okay. Um, and then to like actually making it, I was like, holy fuck, they're actually making that thing. It's like yeah. Um, and I was kind of excited for it um, ever since kind of um, the first trailer got announced. Um, before it kind of, before it kind of got like fully announced, I was like, "Oh, the Guardians of the Galaxy." Don't know how that's gonna work out, but um, okay, whatever. The first trailer got announced, and I absolutely fell in love with the whole like idea of the film. I thought it, thought it looked great. I thought kind of um, all the the, the, the style, I fell in love with the style really. I thought the style was absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's kind of I think that carryover uh, kind of delivered exactly what it wanted to deliver from those gene trailers. Um, that's basically that's basically my entire review there. But um, you know. All right, Bodie. Um, well, I saw this uh last Friday with my father. Uh, yeah, and I gotta say, I really enjoyed it. Um, probably my favorite thing about the film was probably the Guardians themselves, uh, specifically, um, Groot. And Rocket, mm -hmm. they were just fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, they were probably like the best thing about that film. Um, and I gotta say, um, oh, I have nothing else. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, what else? <laughs> what else should I talk about? Um, I think one of the things that I think, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> oh, you say you're fantastic at talking. Yeah, I just like, you know, this, this film, eh, that's basically my review on everything. <laughs> I start and I just like bullshit myself out of it, so yeah. Mm -hmm. you just voted just, yeah, woo, okay. Mm -hmm. uh. And uh, I, I probably, I hate this part. I probably should say, okay, the movie wasn't as bad as I made it out to be. A lot of yes. things I thought were going to be bad were actually not as bad yes. as I think they were. Do I think the movie is the greatest thing ever? Fuck no. Fuck off. Winter Soldier is the greatest thing ever. Um, but I will say, I haven't had this much fun in a movie in a really, really long time. Probably since The Wolf of Wall Street, because this just had so many excellent jokes and gags and comedy bits in it um uh my favorite personally was the bit with the leg and i probably should say we're going to spoil the entire movie so if you haven't seen it um sorry i'm going to spoil everything uh but it, but when peter quill goes to so much trouble to get the leg from the prisoner and rocket just tells him nah i didn't need the leg
Uh, so, sorry guys, the recording broke off here because another bunch of my friends tried to call me, and they're complete fucking dicks. Um, but anyway, after telling them to piss off, we're going to continue uh, discussing it. So, uh, last thing we were talking about was the comedy in the movie, and I think all of us can agree the movie is really hilarious. It was incredibly hilarious. Yeah, um, I'd say Rocket and Drax were the funniest characters in the whole movie because Rocket's a little sociopath and Drax is, um... A giant tree! <laughs> <laughs> That's Groot, talking about Drax. Oh, Drax. But yeah, Groot, Groot was also I very... Like Groot. Uh, but yeah, Drax's whole thing about not understanding metaphors is kind of a double-edged sword for me. On the one hand, I don't know if they did that for comedy reasons or because David Bautista can't act. But both. on the other hand, it's really, really funny. Yeah, I think it's both. David, he's a, he's a fucking terrible actor, so it's like perfect for him. Mm. You know, everyone's thinking, oh, David Easter, he's shy, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will say he did a good job with the with the bit more of the emotional scenes. Um, mm. But I would have preferred Vin Diesel because I think Vin Diesel can actually act. Yeah. Uh, and what else was I going to say? I think the best comedy bit in the film was when Rocket tells Pratt Lord that he needs the leg off some dude. And then Pratt Lord goes through all this trouble to get the leg. And then when he finally gets it, Rocket's like, nah, I never needed the leg. <laughs> and... <laughs> And my whole theater just lost it at that scene. They were all burst out laughing. And I think the great follow-up was with the eye, when he tells yeah. them, yeah, I need this guy's eye. And Pratt Lord's like trying to stop it. No, 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 they don't. Um, yeah. I can't wait for Avengers 3 when the Guardians show off. And oh, yeah. Marcus, like, oh, um. It's going to be a snark contest. It's going to be who's the snarkiest of the snarky. I know. It's gonna, yeah, it's going to explode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, what would you, who was the best performance besides Rocket for you guys? Because Rocket, I think, is just the best character overall. He gets the most development, he gets the funniest gags, and he's just the one they completely nailed as far as I'm concerned. Um, I, I honestly think, um, Drax. Um, I'm surprised I'm saying that also, because, like, I, I was really not looking forward to Drax. I was thinking, uh, David, he's the mm -hmm. whatever, you know. Um, but I thought it was really, really good, and I think he really pulled it off, and I think I was super surprised with how good, like, entertaining he was, and I loved the whole stuff with, like, him, uh, training for years to kill the man who killed his family, and then he wasn't able to beat him, mm -hmm. you know, his, his entire, kind of, like, goal in life was just, like, oh, wait, I can't actually fight this guy, you know, and I thought mm -hmm. that was really, really powerful, I think it was really, kind of, well done, you know, and I thought it was a really, kind of, quite a sophisticated scene, um, you know, which I wasn't expecting. I wasn't, it's like, hit me. You know, like, whoa, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty tight. Um, so, yeah. I was also... I got, okay, you, oh, I, go. I got to have to review with James. I think, for me, it was, I think Drax was probably, had, was one of my uh, other favorite performances in this film because of, um, you know, how basically everything that James just said. Um, and on that note, second or third or fourth to that, I got to say, I was kind of impressed um, by uh, Pratt on some scenes. Like, I think he did a... I think he played Star-Lord, or that version of Star-Lord well. I don't... I'm not uh, a big... Like, I'm not fully aware of the Guardians as much, but I know that for what he did, I think he did a pretty good job with, you know, what he had. Mm -hmm. I think they're all really good. I think there's, like, you know... You know, I think the only kind of like I, I, there was like you know, almost like no kind of like member of the group that I thought was really weak or like whenever they showed up, I was like, oh fuck off, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I thought they were all pretty good. And all, I, you know, I did want I did want to tell Star Lord and um, Gamora to fuck off in the romance scenes because yeah, they really yeah, dragged them was, out. That's the problem. I, I, yeah, I think I think it's kind of like unnecessary. It was a bit mm -hmm. like okay, I mean, it's like it's like checklist stuff mm -hmm. you know and I, I don't like kind of talking about that because I, I don't really believe in checklist scenes mm -hmm. or whatever um but i think it was a checklist scene mm -hmm. and um it was like oh, a little bit of a romance in there a bit, mm -hmm. you know and i i was kind of impressed with the comics of like not having of bendis's the audience not having gamora and peter uh, peter quill having a thing you know and then you know, they never had it even in the 
pre-Bendis that they were never romantically involved. They were always just friends. Yeah, so I, I thought that was a bit meh. I think it kind of also brought down Gamora's character from being the most, you know, badass assassin chick in the universe than yeah. to be kind of a bit of a lame love interest. Who, mm-hmm. you know, and she was... should have got she should have got more badass scenes. I think she, yeah. And she never really got her own moment to shine. Really, like, mm. uh, no. I will say, Groot Groot got his moment near the end of the movie where he like pushes his branches through like ten guys and then smashes the other ten guys. Yeah. The ten guys just ran through, and I will say everyone got a good moment where they were like the badass. And Gamora never really got that. She was either eyeing Star Lord, or she was too busy being rescued by everybody else. And I really you, feel like yeah. she needed to like save somebody at some. I guess. Move. I guess you could say that maybe like the fight with um, Gamora and Nebula may have been like the scene for her to shine, but I don't yeah. think it, it wasn't. wasn't... Yeah. long enough and it kind of was and it was not really the focus of short. the scene the focus of that of that part was really stopping ronin's ship and it was really like you know saving the day it was it was kind of like a pointless fight i feel like they should have fought you know when ronin goes to nowhere and i think gamora and nebula should have fought then yeah i think yeah i think the thing the Gamora slash Nebula fight should have been kind of more powerful. Also, I mean, they're two people who've grown up together and they're sisters and stuff like that. Uh-huh. They should, you know, they you know they've grown up together and blah blah. Mm-hmm. blah. It should be kind of more of a powerful scene of like you know, oh shit, now to fight someone who I actually really love. You mm-hmm. know, and, that be more and, and Nebula even told her that out of all their siblings that Thanos abducted over the galaxy, Nebula actually hated Gamora the least of them all, which doesn't make sense with the comic prequel, but whatever, those don't really mm-hmm. matter. Um, I think you brought up an interesting point is that this film has a kind of a problem where it tells you a lot of stuff, but it really should be showing it instead. Like, I feel yeah, like, it like especially backpacks. like in the scene where like Gamora is just like, oh, I wasn't, I was betraying my, uh, my Ronan the whole time, you know, mm-hmm. it's just like, yeah. oh, thanks for that little tidbit. Yeah. We should have got, okay. uh, got a scene with uh, Gamora like kind of. You know, so just one scene before she actually before that first scene. Um, you know, I'm time cutting stuff like that. I understand that much, but mm-hmm. I think that would have been more important for a character just to have one little scene of like her, you know, to show that she she's working against uh, Thanos and she, um, you know, she doesn't like them anymore and stuff. And I think you could have done flashbacks with Gamora, Thanos, and Nebula really easily because these they kind of grew up under Thanos, so I really think you could have had a scene, you could have had a little flashback where you show why he likes Gamora more, why Nebula is jealous of her, and you could have even had Thanos, like, do something really badass, instead of just sitting in a chair for 20 seconds and then never showing up for the rest of the movie. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Thanos was underused, I think, and, uh, I mean, I was cool to see him. I was Mm -hmm. like, oh, cool, sweet, you know, that's awesome. But I think it would have been better useful if he was just there in like a hologram or just kind of like there like you know mm-hmm. on communicate or something like that don't actually show him I, w- I would not have showed him um i think it was cool but i think it should have been more of a build up to mm-hmm. him kind of being a big one effect. thing that i really hated about um that scene with thanos is the fact that ronan just kind of kills um the other character mm-hmm. like just prematurely and with how they kind of build him up in the avengers mm-hmm. you would think that he would be like some like sort of an important character people and he even had like a mephisto him really now yes they thought he, he was going to be like the mephisto for this universe because i don't think they have the rights to mephisto i'm not sure I, no i Why think they have the right to no 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 i think if i remember correctly sony gave back the rights to ghost rider after Number oh, two, bomb. Yeah, but still, I don't think they would have used. I don't Mephisto. think that would have been. That would have worked anyway. It's like why would Mephisto then just show up in space for no apparent Yeah, reason? yeah. Um, I, I, I would have liked to him to like. They could have had something. Thanos do something small, like he kills the other, and then Ronan was like a little scared. And then Thanos just snapped his fingers, and then his hammer just breaks. You know. Thanos just like, yeah. moves his hand a little bit, and then boom, his hammer just smashes into pieces. Um, I will say I really like Josh Brolin how he looks, uh, and I really yeah. like his voice. Yeah. You know, mm. um, I always thought mm-hmm. Thanos would have a big, like, booming, you know, deep voice, and I think that Brolin really uh, did that pretty well. Yeah. 
Um, um, um my brain stopped. Um, someone yeah, continue. Um, okay, let's see. What else? Um, Ronan. I, 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 we're kind of we're kind of divided on Ronan. I liked him. Um, but uh, uh, you, you didn't really like him. I didn't like him. I a lot. Like. Uh, okay, you too. Sort it out in the. It, he, I think he. Sh- it didn't. It felt like he. He should have had more. More to him, like. Because really we're kind of introduced to him, and I think we he mentions like something about you know the Kree and how like Thanos you know offered him to be his little pawn and I guess the problem is that and I think this is the problem with this film like the major flaw is that the villains really don't have much to them, uh, including Ronan. Um, okay. Thanos doesn't really count because that's more of a cameo. Uh, Nebula doesn't really have much to her, mm-hmm. um, and when you ha- when your main villain is you know doesn't have much to him, you can't really feel much you know investment. You don't. Yeah, care. you don't feel yeah. you don't feel like you should care about you know what Ronan does because mm-hmm. you don't really get to know much about you know why he's doing this, mm-hmm. which I think they explain, but I can't even remember it. Well, this is kind of a, I... this kind of a problem. Uh, I think Ronan should have had a, a different introduction. I think and, he, and I think he should have had a flashback because this whole thing is revenge. Like the Zandarians murdered his family members, and I think that they should have had a flashback to show that to see you know the Zandarians being you know kind of bad guys and why he hates them so much. Um, I thought it was like um, he was a religious prophet, and he didn't really, well, not prophet, he, he was a religious zealot, and he didn't like the way that the Kree Empire was being ran at the moment. Well, but he also um, says that they murdered his his grandfather and his father, and then he kind of wants revenge for that too. Okay, well, I, I guess that would make sense, but I think the stuff with the religious kind of like um, wanting to change the way the, the things are, mm-hmm. I find that really interesting because I think it's a very it's a very world um, current world kind of like thing. Um, kind of religious and like extremists about that mm-hmm. wouldn't change how society works um, but, because it's how they say that it works. And I thought that was quite interesting for the villain of the piece. Um, um, but I ha- but here's my counter argument. The problem with that is that mm-hmm. we don't see Cree culture at all. Yeah. Okay. Because it's like it's like you're trying to change the status quo, but we don't know what the status quo is. So. That's a good point. Yeah, um, I think if we kind of saw like how the Korean Empire was being run and like that, mm-hmm. you know, it being maybe more of a a, a, judis, a judicial system, mm-hmm. you know, called, um, than like however. I uh, did. I did like, like that they it. silently kind of support him. There's like that little scene where Nova Prime is trying to tell the Korean Empire to stop Ronan, and they are just like, "That's not our problem," and they're kind of like silently supporting him, but they're not like directly mm. helping him. I thought that was mm. kind of cool. I think it would be more kind of like, I think they maybe didn't want to get into that maybe, because um, that's quite, I mean, we're talking about that now, that sounds quite, you know, quite politically heavy, mm-hmm. um, and something that could have probably gotten away from like, what the actual story was or what the style of the movie was. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe that's probably why they didn't want to get too much into kind of Ronan's backstory, Ronan's kind mm-hmm. of whole policy and stuff like that. Um, and I, okay, well, I, I still thought he was good. Um, mm-hmm. Because I think that's kind of an interesting kind of like I think that's an interesting kind of like um, uh, uh, motivation for a villain to have. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't truly really, truly really explored, but I think for a Marvel, you know, for a modern Marvel movie, for a modern, uh, you know, big block, block, block was the Hollywood movie. Mm-hmm. I can see why they wouldn't want to go that route. Um, I think he was good for what he had. I think the way I think um, his persona and his kind of like uh, character was very good. Um, I think he actually did, did a good job as, as Ronan. Um, and I liked the way he looked and I liked mm-hmm. the way he kind of acted and stuff like that. I thought that was very entertaining. Um, uh, I, and that didn't really drag me away from, too much from the fact that his, uh, he wasn't really that well explained. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. I will say that Robert Redford's Alexander Pierce is Ronan done right because yeah. with Pierce, we have a frame of reference. We know what the world is, and when we listen to him in Winter Soldier, we understand what he's saying and i feel like and we see like the relationship between like him and um nick fury so we kind of understand you know what their deal is Mm -hmm. 
And on some level, you actually kind of agree with Pierce in Winter Soldier. You agree that y you need to, like, step up control a little bit, but you can use fear to do it. I mean, I really feel like yeah. Ronan needed something like that. But I will say that while he is pretty one-dimensional for me, I will say that he's probably the strongest one physically because Loki was a complete bitch. He got bitch-slapped by everybody. Uh, Malekith he was, was worthless. And Ronan, like, they fucking nuke him, then drop a ship on him, then blow up a bigger ship on him, and he barely has a scratch. That was Please pretty impressive, I must say. Though I think most of that could have been because of the the uh, Infinity Stone that he possessed, but, you know. I, don't know, I, kind of, I wish he didn't die, so we have, like, him, like, fight Hulk or something like that. Well... Because, like, I mean, the Avengers are kind of quite, they're quite powerful at the moment. I mean, I don't really know who else they're going to, I mean, like, Thanos is probably the only villain that's actually going to actually, you know, Well, I think Ultron's going to give them a good run for their money. Yeah, I think so, too. But, like, I think, kind of, like... I also want to see... Oh, go ahead, James. No, go ahead. I was just going to go on. I also want to see, because we're talking about, like, powerful villains that they're going to fight. I really want to see the Celestials now. Yeah. With that little cameo in the collector's room. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that... That will be pretty sweet, like, the Avengers having to, like, that, I could see that being, like, the big finale for, like, all the superhero, like, the Avengers and, like, Guardians of the mm -hmm. Galaxy, anything else that they, like, And try they can to use Galactus, show up. so they need to use something similar to him. Is so yeah, and I think the What's Celestials that? are the closest thing to there is to Galactus. Plus, there's, like, thousands, if not millions of them, so, mm -hmm. I mean, that's really cool. And think about they don't it. have the they don't have the rights to Silver Surfer Galact and oh. yeah they do have the the rights to Skrulls Fox and and Marvel can use Skrulls together. It's kind of like it weird how yeah you know how they can't use the Bazoon though mm -hmm. even though because the Bazoon showed up in a um, fantastic uh, four. A, a, I think it was a Silver Surfer actually. Uh huh. Um, so but, they can use, you know, but they, but they can't, but they can use Ronin, but they can't use the Badunas. But they use the Sakarans, and the Sakarans are from Planet yeah. Hulk, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I really want to see how that's going to work out. Um, if it wasn't drop things, to, you know, keep us happy, mm -hmm. but, um, I mean, because, because they're dancing around the idea of doing Planet Hulk, and I'm not too sure about it. Um, I'd like I to Hulk. see it. I think it could be. I great. would also. I really want to see another Hulk film, mm -hmm. and yeah. I... I would be open for Planet Hulk. I, I, I would be open for Planet Hulk. I think it would be great. But the problem is that like you have to find benchmark a way of Ruffalo. Ruffalo. Yeah, and I don't really want that because I think he's really good. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you have to kind of rewrite Planet Hulk a bit to have um, Bruce, Bruce more in. It's going to be fun. I think, yeah, yeah, more Bruce, and I think, I think that'd be fine um, for a big kind of Hulk space movie. Because mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they've, they've proven that they can do space movies. So. Boom. Uh, God, I forgot what point was that. What was I gonna make? Uh, um, Ronan, are we still talking about him or are we done with him? Well, there's not really much to say. I'd say that he yeah. was pretty threatening to them. Like he wasn't just yeah. a punching bag. If anything, he's the yeah. guy who really fucked everyone else up. The last thing I want to say is I'm really surprised they decided to kill him because Ronan's like a really big deal in Marvel Cosmic, and I was not expecting him to die. I thought he was gonna live for sure. I mean, I knew he was a bad guy in the film, and you know the bad guys usually die at the end. But um, uh, I, I was kind of hoping that he was uh, die. But um, when Thanos gets the Infinity Gauntlet, he quite easily res resurrect him or whatever. Well, he could uh, resurrect everybody, like everybody who's ever died. He can just like snap him back, like probably Red Skull. I, I'm pretty sure he's gonna resurrect Red Skull. Hello. I'm here. James, oh, James is gone. Oh, he's back. Oh, sorry about that. Um, did, did the entire call drop? No, 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 it's still recording. No, it's, we're okay. here. Um, so you really think they're going to create like a mass revival of people or they're just going to bring back a couple of guys associated with the Infinite Stones? Um, because I think Red Skull was sucked into the cube. Oh, was he? Oh, God, I need to rewatch that fucking movie. Really he was like vaporized, but it was kind of like how Ronan got vaporized. I don't think they're really, really dead, yeah. but I think they're probably like sucked into the stones. I would really oh, like that. Did, I think that hold on. I haven't seen Thor: The Dark World since like it came since like it came out in theaters. But didn't the same thing happen to uh, Malachite as well? Like, well, he got 
sucked in or like and some he shit got like teleported that. Teleported to Planet Shithole. And then he got a ship mm-hmm. dropped on him, and then we don't see what happens, but it's implied oh. that they sucked the ether out of him, so So oh, they probably have his right. corpse. But they but he doesn't have the stone in him. So I think he also could come back, but really who the fuck cares about Malik if they completely wasted that character? Yeah, so, yeah. Thor 2 wasn't yeah. really that good. Mm-hmm. How, however, I think that like if they did bring Red Skull back, I think that would be fantastic. Yeah. You know, I would that'd like be to so see cool Red Skull stuff. again. Yeah, like, like Avengers, um, Avengers 3, you know, the after credits, is that like uh, Red Skull just getting re- like, resurrected or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be really cool. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't wait yeah, to see kind of the other gems and stuff mm-hmm. get used. That's gonna be really cool. We have four of them right now. The, 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 we have the cube. That's, um, that's the space gem. The Tesseract. Yes, the Tesseract. tesseract. That's the space gem. The ether is the reality gem. This one, the orb in this film, is the power gem, and it's implied that the little stone you see in Loki's staff is the mind gem. Yeah. I don't know where Loki got it from, but it just, it just does. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we're kind of talking I... about more Marvel Universe type stuff. Um, mm. What else in the movie did we really like? Uh, I think this is visually the best Marvel movie because I think they have a problem yeah. where they all kind of look like bland, kind of TV-esque. But this one yeah. really looks like a feature film. Yeah. Um, I think because they had such a big kind of playground to do stuff in. Uh, I mean, like... You couldn't really say Captain America, the Winter Soldier, looked fantastic. I mean, it looked fine. But it looks it too like TV-esque. You gotta TV-esque, admit, it does. You know what I mean? Like, like just the way... Like, it it the doesn't have level, that... Just, like... it, it has a TV feel. I mean, it's obviously not a TV movie, but it kind of has that TV feel. And even Joss Whedon admitted that the Avengers felt too much like a TV movie because he didn't really know how to work on big-budget films. Really? Yep. Avengers is like the big blockbuster movie. I I like really disagree. Movie, really. Um, but okay. Um, but anyway. Well, I mean, yeah. okay. It's, it's the biggest. It's one of the, one of the biggest. Actually, it's, it's probably. It's the biggest action movie ever. I know, but even people who've seen it admit that it has too much of a TV feel. Really, I don't think. I mean, there's a part where the whole like jump through New York City think... and like punches things out of the air. But it's still. I think it's because I think it's more so in the like the normal kind of shots, uh, where there isn't much action going on. It's just like a lot of talking. I think it's, like how the cinematography, the cinematography is kind of like. Yeah. yeah, which is weird because. He also did Godzilla. I haven't seen Godzilla, but it does look a little bit more, cinematic to me. I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen well, Godzilla, so I can't that's... judge on, that. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I, I kind of I, I don't really agree with that at all because like the parts where they're sitting around talking, of course, it, you know, you can't make that look fantastic because they're sitting around talking, you know, in like a set. But it's you not the talking really... scene; it's the action bits. The action bits just look kind of washed out to me. Like I, my problem really? with the MCU is that it doesn't have a style, and I really think that a comic movie should have at least a little bit style to it, like a bit stylized, which is kind of why I like Man of Steel because. You know, Man of Steel is washed out and does have a lot of color, but it, at least it has a style of its own, and that's what the Guardians of the Galaxy has. You can clearly see that this is a stylish movie that has imagination to it, where the other MCU movies don't. They don't really have that. Even Thor looks. You mean like the, 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 the directing wasn't like super kind of like uh, trademark directing stuff. What? Well, you know, like a director has like a feel to him. You know, it has like that kind of feel of that director. But you, know? you gotta admit that they don't exactly inspire you visually. I mean, the Thor movies are bleh. They should yeah. look like this, but they look bleh. They should look like an Assad Ribic, you know, art. Like, because Assad oh, yeah. Ribic does like yeah. mm-hmm. crazy, crazy uh, scenery. And I, I kind of was... wish that. They got him back when they were producing Thor because his scenery is just fucking. Well, amazing. he wasn't doing Thor until after <laughs> Thor one. Like he wasn't. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But I think they could bring him in to do at least concept art designs for three. Mm. Um, well, I don't know what they're doing with Thor three. With Thor three at all. Um, yeah. But if they're gonna do some like so like um, I think it's Ragnarok, isn't it? So Uh-oh. if they could do some like in like cool stuff with the other realms like mm-hmm. you know because 
the Dark Elf realm was just like nothing. Mm-hmm. It was a big plant of the. But you know, if you made the Light Elf realm, because have you seen? Um, like the, the Light Elf realm is this fantastic, like, kind of like fantasy world, and you mm-hmm. made that that could look great. You know, mm-hmm. Jotunheim could look fantastic. Yeah, but it just looks good. Yeah, you know, but it's like, I think that I think that this Guardians of the Galaxy should be the template for the next Thor movie. I think this is what yeah. Thor should have been. This. Yeah, well, Thor should have been Walter Simonson's run. Yeah, know, run it should fucking, have been you know, much more uh, fantasy without it being sci-fi. Yeah, they yeah. really the Thor, they, they missed the mark. Because right. even though Thor is, like, very fantasy-inspired, um, it still has a lot of sci-fi elements to it. Um, and I think, again, going back to Asad Ribic, he has managed to, you know, combine the fantasy element with a lot of with um, a little bit of sci-fi to it, which makes it look very, very unique. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think the Thor films need to have, is that kind of mm-hmm. uniqueness. Um, I think the Thor need a new director, really. I think yeah. It's I don't think Alan movie. Taylor's going to come back, because I hear that he and Kevin Feige really butted heads mm-hmm. over two. I think they need to get someone who has a really kind of good, like, you know, feel and a good kind of, like... Emphasis, you know, a good a good vision for Thor. Because mm-hmm. at the moment they don't really have it. Yeah, Thor um, like, is really the, the weakest, weakest franchise of them all, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, like Captain America stepped right the fuck up mm-hmm. with a bit of Captain America too. You know, it's like boom, Captain America. You know, Iron Man has always been kind of the granddaddy of more, but you know, Chris Evans really set it up. Um, mm. and Chris Hemsworth is just kind of still back there. Just you know, I think Chris Pratt, or honestly, like you know, surpassed him and and uh. Marvel movie um, uh, Chris's, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, well, well, there's like main characters, Chris's, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think I think I think Chris Pratt has kind of surpassed Chris Hemsworth, even though you know, he's only had one film to do it in. You yeah, know? and this guy's had three. And, yeah, so. Yeah, you know, uh-huh. I think Chris Hemsworth is good, but mm-hmm. like he just hasn't been given enough good stuff yet. Yeah. So. Or Ragnarok needs to be like Winter Soldier. Really needs to be like. The big awesome Thor movie. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, we kind of moved away from Guardians of the Galaxy, but uh, going back to Guardians, um, the Collector's Museum. I cannot tell you how much stuff I was analyzing in that whole. Thing. How many references? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my um, god. So we saw think, Cosmo, think... the yeah the, the space, space dog. dog. Yeah. We saw Chitari. We saw Dark Elf. Real. That that thing looked like. Azog from The Hobbit. Uh, it kind of did. And I was like, wait, that's a dark elf. Mm-hmm. But it does look as like Azog. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is really yeah, weird. I, I kind of wish it's it was. Like, it's a skin more. color. Yeah. I, I actually thought it was a scroll, but it, it doesn't kind of really look like a scroll. Mm. Unless they're, you know, gray or like beige in this universe. Ah, eh, who knows? Uh, but let's get to the big guy, Howard the fucking duck. Oh, we're going there already. Oh man. Yeah. Did anyone expect <laughs> yeah. this? Of course not. Jesus I fucking Christ! It was all the point of it. It was like, let's have the most unexpected thing possible in the entire fucking movie. Yeah. And just throw it at you, you know. Um. Wow. Yes, please. Howard the duck movie. Oh, I'm yeah. Um. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think they're gonna do anything with it. I I really doubt it, and I kind of hope so because I think it would be a bit. I would like to see yeah. him like I wouldn't want to give him his own film, but I would like to see him be in like a future film, maybe as like a supporting character. I think they or have like, like a, yeah. an extent, extended cameo or something. I think he should be hmm. kind of like a Stan Lee type of thing, where he like shows up and has cameos like in little places. I think, it's, I think when... I think they're actually doing that. I think that's maybe what we're setting up for um, when Stanley dies. Mm-hmm. The addition of, like, Howard the Duck is, like, yeah. having a cameo or something like that. I, I would not be surprised, and I think that would be a good way to go with it. Mm-hmm. Because I really um, don't think that there's any point to making a Howard the Duck movie. I mean... Of course not, no. I mean, <laughs> no, not at all. Um, but, yeah, no. I think he could be a really cool, like, recurring gag character that shows up in different places. Like, Iron Man 5, yeah. like, there's Howard the Duck's cameo. Just because. I am at five. Jesus. Oh fuck. fucking Christ. Uh, no, I shouldn't have said that. 
I don't know one either. I don't know. I don't know what to um, but what else was there to discuss? I really hope that the Batcave and Batman vs Superman is like the collector's museum, just like a whole bunch of little yeah. references and nods and stuff. to stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really know what to discuss anymore. We've pretty much run. Um, kind of covered all of it. Yeah. I want to talk about the Novacore. I thought they were really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of I, I, I like the. How they portrayed the Nova Corps in this, actually. Yeah, I think that I think that I think like um, I like that they didn't have the um, the human rocket thing in, but I think their ships kind of looked quite a lot. Like, they had like you know, the whole mm-hmm. Nova look thing, um, and when they've made the whole kind of like big net thing to hold their own ship, mm-hmm. that was really that really remind me of kind of like how yeah. Nova, the way yeah. he looks and the way he can like mm-hmm. you know his, his whole deal. I, I don't um, I don't think that the human rocket thing can really work. I think it would kind of look yeah. ridiculous just seeing a human bouncy ball go all, all over the place. Yeah, I think he has looked quite cool like in the past. Like I think he has kind of style to him. But I've never been a huge Nova fan. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I like I, I think I like, like the it. fact oh, okay. I, I would <laughs> like it um <laughs> Wait, sorry. Should we um talk about the Nova core kind of like just in general and then we'll get into talking about Guardians too. Um, okay, so the Nova Corps, I was surprised that that British dude died. Yeah, Peter Serafinovich, yeah. I was really, okay, I was really glad that he was in the movie, and I was really hoping that he would be, like, he would actually, he would actually become a, fin of, um, a Guardians 2, because he's really, really good, mm-hmm. and he made me enough for comedy, mm-hmm. but he's actually really good, kind of serious mm-hmm. actor also, and I think he, he, he's actually perfect for the Marvel Universe, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, unfortunately he died, so I was like, fuck. I was actually know. expecting another cop-out moment where, like, we think he died, and then he just comes out of the room, and he's like... I'm all right, you a holes, but yeah, he's really okay. I really recommend his um, fifty impressions in, in a minute. <laughs> really fucking funny. Yes. Has anyone else seen that? Yes. Never, never seen. It. Oh. Okay. Uh, but I, so, but I will, I will. Uh, I was, really, really I was good. generally he's... surprised. Sorry, I'm keep like interrupting. No, no, I was, good. I, I was, saying he's I was, like... I was really surprised of how they kind of portrayed the Nova Corps in this. Um, in the fact that. It's very different from like how they usually kind of are, which is basically just like XPs of the Green Lantern Corps, mm-hmm. and and they made them very more you know police like mm-hmm. in a way, and I I, and I really like that idea. Well, um, your- how they're how how they're gonna introduce like the the actual Nova concept from the comics into the films, mm-hmm. I won't know, I- but. From what I from what I see, I liked it yeah. a lot. Yeah, uh, I, know. I think they were. I'm sorry. Uh, James Gunn has said that he doesn't like Nova, so I don't know. No, that's <laughs> no. no. I, I think he said he didn't like Richard Ryder, which but, like yeah, I never but said he's that. No, Nova. I never said that. No, 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 I never said that. I, I don't. I don't mind. Okay, right. Nova as a concept has never interested me in something. I thought, wow, Nova, cool. I saw this being eh, Nova, whatever. <laughs> you know, and no one cares about Nova, but. Eh. Well, you no, know, no, no, whatever. he actually has a pretty dedicated fan base, and ever since Annihilation, he's, like, had this, like, small vocal fan base who really hate the movie version of Nova's because they don't have the exact same costumes because, you know, nah. because it's not like the classics, fucking assholes. Um, I think it's more just, like, they're afraid that they're squandering a character that they like, not like yeah. the um, and I can see that I can understand why that would be annoying, mm-hmm. but like at the same time, I think it's wor- I think it worked for what they were going for here, of being a group of you know um, police. They were poli- I think I think it was much better. I think having them being flying super cops would this wouldn't work as well. Well, would, they I were originally just ordinary yeah. cops, and then when annihilation happened, they were all murdered, and then they became more like like super cops flying all over the place. Okay. Well, anyway, kind of like the Green Lantern Corps. Yeah. Um, Too bad annihilation does... can never happen because they don't have the rights to annihilus. Fuck. Ha. Yep. Wait, annihilus, annihilus is Fantastic what Four. it's named after? Yes, annihilus. He released the annihilation wave during the annihilation storyline. He basically fucked half the universe before Star Lord Richard Ryder and Drax managed to kill him. Wow. Yeah. Honestly, I thought like. like Alan Nias was just like a dude who got like bit stuff around Fantasy Four every now and again. No, no, no. He was actually one of the big villains. Like it took all the Guardians, wow. all the cosmic characters, and Ronan and all those guys to team up. Even Galactus and Silver Surfer had to come in to stop him. Cause he's kind of a joke character nowadays, you know. No, he's dead. Oh really? Cause he, there was one time uh, there was this. Did anyone else read that Fantastic Four issue or FF issue when uh, Spider-Man's um, living in the same house as Johnny mm-hmm. Storm? 
And then this last page um, joke where um, Peter Mark is just being kind of like annoyed by Johnny Storm the entire time, and um, all this kind of crazy antics happen. Mm-hmm. And then the very last type part, it's like Peter Mark is being kind of meaning to kick Johnny Storm out of his apartment, like, the entire issue. Mm-hmm. The last uh, last page, um, Peter Parker can like goes to the bathroom, and uh, he can just kind of come, you see his, you see his like his expression thing. Oh fuck. He comes back out. He says, "All right, get the fuck out of my apartment." And he's like, "Why?" Johnny Storm's like, "Why? What happened?" And he's like, "Come and look." And you come and look, and in the bathroom, sitting in the toilet, having a shit, is Annihilus. Yeah. Uh, Anyone else read that? That's pretty good. But sure it's is. weird because uh, the Earth guys don't yeah. know about Annihilation, though. Oh really? They don't. So it's just like a thing that happened, and no one. Well, actually... it was it was like a Marvel Cosmic event. Like it, there was like yeah. a what if where it got to Earth, but it never got to Earth. And this was the point where Civil War was going on. So I don't think anyone knows about anything that happened. They don't know about Ultron conquering half the galaxy. That's wow. imperative. They don't know any about that stuff really. Wow, I really need to get in Marvel Cosmic because that's really interesting. Yeah, Annihilation is actually uh-huh. one of the most you know liked Marvel Cosmic storylines. I actually like it really too. I read a bit of um, awesome. War of Kings, mm. um, like the first prelude kind of thing, mm-hmm. and that was really, really good. It was like the Inhumans, just like, yeah. they show up in the galaxy and they just fucking kick everyone's ass. Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, um, what the fuck were we talking about? Guardians 2, let's um, that. Yeah, Guardians 2. Um, I want to see the Spartoy Empire, but here's the problem. Isn't it Spartax? Nah, I think it's the Spartoy. Uh, let me check. I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, Glenn Close tells him that he's part of a race that's really old, that hasn't been seen for a while, but if it's an empire, then how can you not know about them? For a... Yeah, that's, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. Um, so I'm guessing it's going to be different from kind of Bendis' take on the Spartax. Well, um, he was always an asshole. You know, Jason, he was always like oh, a yeah, dictatorial totally. asshole who wanted J- Peter to succeed him, but Peter never took orders very well, so... That's probably what's um, going to happen in the movie. Yeah, I, I don't know how it's going to work. Then. I think it was like an empire, like far off in some other place, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I guess it doesn't make sense. I think kind of stuff with Glenn Close being like, hey, guess what? You are. Mm-hmm. That was a bit unnecessary. It was a bit like, why do we need that? I think I think it were better that the team were able to come together yeah. to, to hold the gem, other than it being, hey, you have like special super DNA. I hated that it's scene, like, though. Yeah, it just... Eh. And then Ronan being distracted by the stupid dance, like, just when he's about to get his, you know, life's wish, and I was like, fuck. I know. Uh, anyway, um, well, I, I thought it was really good, but, like, the dance was just a bit, okay, whatever. Um, uh, anyway, um, yeah, I, I think um, that, okay, the stuff with Glenn Close being like, hey, you're a DNA thing, mm-hmm. I was a bit like, eh, yeah, mm-hmm. that kind of took, that took, it took the wind out of the, that big ending scene. Um, also, um, did the Guardians like kind of work as like a like a like a, like a covert like or something like that like a like a like a detective unit for not detective but it's like did they work for the Nova Corps now? Mm, in the because they were dressed in the Nova comics, Corps blue. they don't they work for themselves ba- because yeah after Annihilation, all of the Nova Corps are dead except one. Um, mm-hmm. that's Richard Ryder. You know, he gets all the Nova power. And the Guardians are basically replaced the Nova core, and then they branch out. They have, like, different Guardians of the Galaxy teams all over the universe, you know, protecting everything. So if they ever do something like Annihilation, that's they're probably going to replace the Nova core. But like right. I said, they don't have the rights to Annihilus, so they have to really completely alter it. Use the Celestials. Yeah, Yeah, because one of the Celestials kills that planet, right? Yeah, boom. Yeah. Celestials. Yeah. Up in it. Anyway, um, my theory for next issue, for next um next time on Guardians of the Galaxy, whatever. Um, I think what's gonna happen is that um, they're gonna reveal that the Guardians basically can like work as a freelance agent mm-hmm. for the Nova Corps, like to get paid for that, and they just they just go out and do stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just can like stop threats when they see threats. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know, freelance agents. And they kind of, I think the opening of the movie will be like, kind of, they get in some big trouble. Um, they, they almost destroy a planet, something like that. You know, they get, they, they fuck someone up really badly. Um, and then they get kind of Agent Ryder, um, Agent Richard Ryder, uh, assigned their, um, to, to their freelance unit to keep an eye on them. So it's kind of like, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's, and then it almost comes like a, a buddy cop movie, but it was like, you know, all of them. Uh, so Richard Ryder is kind of straight and narrow, kind of like Novacore agent, and he's a command, he's a, 
Um, he's one of the guys with the actual Nova Force in him. You know, he actually has the power of the Nova, whatever. Um, so you can like fly around and blast stuff. Um, and I think I think he will kind of like maybe join the team or something like that, or can like maybe kind of come over and oversee the team. And then that's kind of when the whole stuff with Spartax comes in. Mm-hmm. And I think we're probably gonna have like a like a like a, like a, like a, like a story of like you know um, the past coming back to bite you in the butt. Mm-hmm. Um, so probably some like Drax's past is probably gonna come back. We're probably gonna get some stuff from uh, Groot or like Rocket Raccoon's past. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're probably also gonna have like um, uh, maybe some of like Thanos's um, Thanos's children also coming to take to take revenge on. Uh, I think it, I think it could be killing, possible that Thanos lets Jason know that his son is there just so he can keep the Guardians off his ass while he's off doing whatever. Yeah, because so Nebula they, is probably they, gonna yeah. steal the power gem away from mm-hmm. them. So they're probably going to, yeah. yeah, so probably Nebula is going to show up again. Mm-hmm. Maybe, hopefully, they'll get some stuff with her. Uh, so I kind of hope it's like an almost more of a bit of like an, or, an origin movie, but, like, the origin, their origin is kind of coming back to, you know, getting them. Um, that's kind of what I hope it is, like, almost like a original cinema in a way, but, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's, kind of like, that's what I think it's going to be like. And the ending will be kind of like uh, probably a celestial. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. I don't know. I don't yeah. think uh, we'll see yes. that. I think it's going to be Thanos. <laughs> God damn I don't, it. I, I don't think it's going to be Thanos. I think it will be like Thanos kind of might appear and he'll just say, hey, Jason, can you kill him? Like, you know, your son's a thing. And he's like, what? My son's a, my son's a thing? <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, it's Benjamin Grimm. No, um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's my, that's my kind of theory what's gonna happen and that's what i think of it so hey james gunn i can write guardians yeah uh, um yeah. but anyway uh, james gunn didn't say he wants to do more political stuff so i'm gonna assume we're gonna get maybe some repercussions for them killing ronan and yeah. his sport toy empire um uh, maybe uh, finally show the kree empire yeah, the Kree really should have been shown. Like, we really needed to see what the fuck this guy thinks is so cool about the Kree Empire that needs to be spread throughout the entire galaxy because, yeah, but old point. No real reason to bring that up. Um, but I think we've covered pretty much everything. Um, you know, Thor, Guardians 2, Thanos, whatever. Yeah, we're just going to talk about everything now. We're going to have to rename the video. Um, uh, but... Uh, can I just ask you guys one thing? Do you think that Winter Soldier should have come out now, since because that's like the direct lead into Avengers two instead of this? Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. I, I think I think Guardians of the Galaxy was the perfect the perfect summer movie. Um, I don't think Captain America two isn't really some movie. It's a, it's a good movie. It's a it's a very awesome movie. Um, but I don't think it was. I don't think it's good for the August first slot. You know, the first yeah. movie, some of the big, the big one. Um, I think it worked fine where it was. I'm thinking I made a lot of money, um, but um, maybe they might want to kind of like do something kind of to remind everybody of Jack Two. Maybe have like the, the Blu-ray release kind of just around us. You know, just as they're starting to build up the hype for Avengers Two, maybe. Mm-hmm. That's I really I wish we before. did see some footage because as cool as seeing Howard the Duck was, I think that. It was kind of unnecessary. It's kind of like the Iron Man three post credits. Yeah, he's like just talking to Hulk and it does nothing. I, I yeah, I kind of hope that's like you know because you know the the, the post credit scene was a huge deal. It used to be just the most nuts thing ever. Yeah, uh, and now and it's just... the end of the credits and and now it's just kind of a bit of a time for a joke. Um, and like I, I wanted to go back because I remember the fucking first time you know you see Thor's hammer and it's like holy fuck. Yeah. You know, at the end of Iron Man one, they set up Avengers. Yeah. You know, that was just insane. Of like having Nick Fury say, "Hey, Avengers is a thing." Yeah. That and then in nuts. Incredible Hulk, when you had Tony Stark kind of going to the bar, just like, "Hey, Director Ross, how the fuck are you doing?" And he's just like, "Oh, I'm drinking my ass off." And that kind of just like showed that, hey, these two universes are, you know, hey, you want Edward together. Norton? Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, no, we don't fuck off Edward Norton. Yeah. You're nuts. Uh, when would the Blu-ray for this come out? Like December? Probably sometime in like December, November. I think that's a pretty good time to release the first trailer. Probably even earlier. Yeah, yeah. They, they like to kind of release, or well, at least the first season for all the Avengers on major launch was pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, and they finished filming. Uh, in, it ended um, yesterday. Right. Yeah. So you know, you got perfect time to kind of like to you got enough time to release a cool teaser trailer. 
Um, maybe the, the one from Comic Con would be good to also. Yeah, um, I really want to hear like their them. revamp of Strings on Me. Yeah, that's going to be weird. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it's going to work. I, I heard that, I was like, what, really? That's odd. Yeah, they used that for um, Maleficent, too. Really? Mm -hmm. No, it, it was the, um, it was the, like, the Lana Del Rey cover of uh, What's Up On My Dream. No, 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 when they first, like, they showed, like, a teaser trailer of Maleficent at a comic, and I don't remember which one, but it did use, like, Strings on Me, too. Um, oh, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I'm, I'm pretty um, excited for Avengers too. Um, I gotta say, I think it's gonna be pretty damn cool. I'm really excited to see a good Marvel villain already. I think it's well yeah. past time that we get one. Yeah, I, I mean, Ronan wasn't the worst, but he, he was too one-dimensional, really. Yeah. 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 Winter Soldier could have been but, good, but again, he was just like a pawn. Like he, he, he was, yeah. he was basically like Ronan. Like he was, he was there to beat people up, but he didn't really have a character of his own. Yeah, I, I really hope. I mean, he's actually got on at the moment, but he has like a really big fan base, like on Tumblr and stuff mm -hmm. like that. He's like the popular, even though he had like one or two scenes in like both Captain America movies, you know. Um, but I think it was good for what he had. Yeah. Um, I think, but I think Robert Redford is the best Marvel villain so far, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, and if they found some uh, kind of way to make him like a cybernetic ass kicker, then he would really be the <laughs> ultimate Marvel villain. <laughs> he just turns out to be like yeah. Deathlock or something yeah. like that. I'm really sad. God, yeah. that would be so badass. Yeah, no, same. Yeah. But like, it, they can totally bring him back as Deathlock. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Robert Redford, kudos to you, man. You were, you were the best of the best so far. But let's hope James yeah. Spader can outclass you. Yeah. Um. Yeah, totally. Um, so, we so basically, just to wrap up. Yeah. So, general Guardians consensus was... about Guardians. Um, yeah. I liked it a lot. Um, we all liked it to varying it. degrees, but yeah. You were wrong about it, also. So. Yeah, I was wrong about it. Um, I, all right, I'm not gonna say it's fucking amazing. All you people saying Winter Soldier is a complete piece of shit because of it can go fuck yourselves that's because so, that's, yeah, that's really Winter understand. Soldier is the Dark Knight of the MCU, so piss off. Um, but yeah. I, I was wrong about it. I apologize. Sorry, James Gunn. Sorry, 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 Pratt Lord. Um, Batista, you still can't act. Uh, but yeah. I don't care. I like it. He can't act. That's, that's the best part of the movie. It's like, he can't act. <laughs> Good. <laughs> he didn't want you to act. That's like the it's best. Like, he did such a good job at not acting that he did a really good job at it. That's like the best job for an actor ever. Like, you get paid millions to act shitty, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway. And also, believe Vin Diesel also, you know, Vin Diesel got like, yeah. I wonder how much he got paid just to sit and say one line. He was really, they really should have cast him as Drax. I think, it, I don't they know. probably casted, um, I don't, I don't know his last name, but the other guy, because he was probably a lot more big, you know, built up. I mean, yeah, I think big Drax probably, up. yeah, I think Drax, um, I mean, I think he looks. I think he looks I think great, he looked, but I think also like he he wasn't he wasn't he's not a huge kind of time actor. But he, people know his name. You people know the name David Bautista because yeah. he's you know big in wrestling. Yeah. So I guess that's probably why they didn't want to get someone who was too expensive. But the other, he also knew that he wasn't going to be someone who needed fantastic acting chops. So I think he was fine. Um, yeah. But I hope it, I hope this game didn't like kind of like a lead like a trend of having like wrestlers become like being actors like in Marvel movies. Cause, well, that's actually yeah. happened a lot. Like Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. Well, Dwayne Johnson. Can well, Dwayne. Act. Except yeah, yeah. Dwayne talks. Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> actually, a good actor. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah. I actually, I still want to see Hercules just because he's yeah. Great. I hope he's Shazam. I think he can be a real. Oh, totally. Totally. I yeah. I think he could be a really, you know, cool Shazam, yeah. especially since like Hell. he has that kind of heartness to him. Yeah, and, and he can be a badass too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I just I mean, wish, I I just wish that, he didn't look so different from really Superman level... because I think he would have been the most amazing Superman ever, just based on his personality. Oh no no no! I mean, if he, he if, he, if his look... if he looked more like Superman, and but he kept his personality and kind of his physique, you know, and intact, I think he could have been like the ultimate huge Superman. Superman. Well, Superman is usually huge. Uh, Henry Cavill's. 
But yeah, but Dwayne Johnson is like absolutely huge. I mean, like Superman. But no, no, no. Imagine he's, if, he's... imagine if The Rock looked like Henry Cavill, but he still had The Rock's personality. That's what I'm saying. Basically, okay, get so we just ultimate take, Superman. Take, take The Rock's mind and put it in Henry Cavill's okay. body. So body swap. Yeah. And you yeah. get the ultimate okay. Superman ever. Ultimate Superman. Yeah, I agreed. Um, however, Henry Cavill's pretty good. Yeah, so. he is. Mm. He is. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see him get his shit kicked out of him by Ben Affleck. No. <laughs> no, 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 that's another discussion no. for another day. Right? Ass. Uh, but okay, okay. Uh, I think we've said everything we need to say about this movie and the Marvel troops. Yeah. So yeah, I hope you guys. But, oh yeah, wait, wait, hold on a second. What? The music. Oh, the music. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. The soundtrack was forgettable, but the '80s soundtrack they use is pretty cool. Yeah. 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 So good. Yeah. Love it. Um, the awesome t- mix. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did anyone else um, laugh I'm when his mom listen. died? Because she's like, yeah. reach. Oh my god, you laugh! No, 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 no! no. He's like, she's like, <laughs> reach my hand, Peter, and then he does, and then like one second later, she's like, eh, dead. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> and you laughed. <laughs> yes, I laughed. It was really. I really oh hated my it. god! <laughs> <laughs> that was a really emotional scene. You was like, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, it's oh so funny. God. She's just like. Take my hand, Peter, and then he does, and then one second later, she's like, she's dead. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Why did you take his hand? And the doctor just goes, what were you thinking? Uh, that was really, <laughs> really funny. Um, um, you know, my friend also, like, my friend watched it, and he said it was really good. Like, he also said, like, his like, least favorite part of the movie was that his mum was a bit gross looking at the beginning. I was like, like, dude. <laughs> what are you about? Yeah. I do like that she calls him Star Wars. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was yeah. Good. That's where he gets the little yeah. nickname and all but that. I did like that part when when they're invading the ship, and then Korath just like looks at him. He says Star Lord, and and Pratt's just like smiles. Like, yeah. Finally. Yes. That's so cool. I yeah. love that. Um. Oh shit, Yondu. Oh yeah, Yondu. Space. Oh my Merle. god, we just forgot everything. Space Mole um, was awesome. Space Mole. Yeah. Um. I. I. Okay. I. Everyone says he was like a total bit of scene where he just took out all those guys with his little like whistle, whistle, whistle arrow. Can I just say that sounds like cool. a really bad weapon? Yeah, but I yeah. hope he gets like, yeah, I, I hope think it's like in, in this number film, two. It kind of like works because of how yeah. they like portrayed it. Yeah, but a weapon that you need to they, whistle. They, they to. ditched the arrow. Right. Or they ditched the bow. They kept like, they the arrow. Yeah, they couldn't have done the bow because it's like Hawkeye's already got the bow. It's like, do we really yeah. know, you know? Had the um, space I, I really liked it. I thought it was. Um, I think I think the space arrow thing was really cool. Mm-hmm. The little whistle arrow. I'm calling, I'm calling it the whistle arrow, by the mm-hmm. way. Uh, um, I, th- I thought it was, I think it was just kind of that was really badass. Mm-hmm. It was really kind of interesting. It was it was an inspired kind of like weapon. Uh-huh. I think it was really. I was, and I really I liked, liked the bit it. where he's like talking to the guy who tells Pratt to fuck off after he tells him about Ronan wanting yeah, the like, orb, and, and the guy's really, like, really, really, but <laughs> according to the rules, he's like blah blah blah. But according to the rules, like blah 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 blah. And then he's just like giving yeah. the guy shit. That was pretty funny. And he like and he like buys that little like um bobblehead uh-huh. thing. That was cool. How did he get that <laughs> troll bobblehead to him at the end? Because like bobbleheads. No, but how did he get it? Oh, uh, it, it was in the... it was in a ship. But the ship wasn't there. Oh, you mean how did he? Like how did oh. like, how did the troll get to Pratt so that he could give it back to Yon? Because Pratt had Pratt had it in his ship. No, no, no. Yondu had it in his ship, right? Well, no, 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 I, no. I, he's talking about like one. how did no, he had, how did he give it to him uh, when they were at that little standoff? Like he's just like, all right, give me the thing. He's like, sure, okay. And he switched it out. Like I think he's saying like, how did he have it with him at the time? Get it in his pocket. I don't know. No, 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 the fuck? no. <laughs> he has the troll on his ship, I think. And he yeah. like crashes away from yeah. the city, and then Pratt has it in his hand. Like how did he do that? Oh, who gives a fuck? He, <laughs> he had probably the troll. Maybe he planned it out before it's just like yeah i'm gonna do this to him yeah they probably, you probably put it in you probably made two of them because you see the beginning of, the, of that part where like they have um oh they have yeah all, they had all the old things yeah they had a bunch of the old things so i'm guessing just I just put one as a decoy mm-hmm. you know and just yeah let him have but it. i did uh, like that little guess. bit at the end where he like knows like his adopted son screwed him over but he doesn't care not that he just like he just like smiles yeah. and it's like oh yeah. He's like, that's frat. Yeah. Can you imagine I, if they gave him big-ass Finn? That would be so yeah. bad. Uh, no, I, I would, uh, honestly, I would love that. That would be oh, that cool. Would so yeah. 
Uh-huh. Like, I would love oh, it. It is a fucking like it is a massive fin on his head. That would be okay. I, I'm, honestly, missed opportunity. James. Shut up! No, no. Zero out of ten. Yeah. I like how he looks like Mr. T with the small one. Yeah, yeah. I think it was good. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but anyway, Space Merle was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I agreed. Um, and it had a bunch of nice little awesome. cool side aliens. Like, there's, like, this one guy who kind of looks like a goblin, and then Drax steals his knife, and he just says, but that was my favorite knife. Yeah. <laughs> that was like one, like one of the little problems with the film, I think, was that, like, some of them, too many human characters, too many human aliens. Yeah. They, and you see that you see that a lot of things, and it's like, I, I've kind of gotten used to it mm-hmm. by now, but it's still like, eh, yeah. okay. I did like yeah. Nathan Fillion's alien, you know, the guy who, like, goes to Pratt Lord, and, he, and he's like telling you, "I'm gonna kill you." And then Groot just shoves two fingers up his nose. That was Nathan fingers Fillion. Up his nostrils. Was it? Yeah. Even, I didn't even know. Yeah, that was Nathan Fillion. Fillion. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy with his leg was actually I... the guy who gave James Gunn his first like directing job. He's like his teacher. Lloyd, uh, oh, that's nice. Lloyd Kaufman yeah. or something. It has a lot of nice details like that. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I need I need to rewatch it. Like, I, I missed quite a few things actually. I need we need to rewatch it again because there's a lot of details around the place. Oh, did you know the the Milano is? Um, yeah, it's his girlfriend's name. name Not his girlfriend, yeah. his love. Yeah, yeah his, his crush. His eighties love love crush. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, I think that's about it. Really, yeah. honestly, we just... I mean, <sighs> there's nothing really much to say. Yeah. Except we yeah, um, all really we, liked yeah. it. We, all really we can give it, it. Like, out of 10. Out of 10. Okay, you guys say. Um, I'm going to say 8. I, yeah, I, I either 7.5 or 8 out of 10 for me. I got a 7.5. Yeah, I I, although I, although I do think while you're watching it's like a 9 because it's so fucking hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, yeah I think I think you have to definitely step back and like, look at it a bit to, you know, mm-hmm. actually... You know, I, I think that's kind of why so many people are just having this knee dirt, dirt reaction to, like, Captain America 2 sucks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. But I do think that um, it's all fine hilarious. like, oh, good, okay, but while you're watching it, it's so oh, much yeah, fun yeah. and you don't care. Yeah. There were so many films that I liked that were, it's like, you know, the actual story of it is meh, uh-huh. but, like, the fucking, you yeah. know, it's like, and, there's so many Yeah, films. it's not like Iron Man 3 where it, they use the comedy to disguise, you know, the fact that the movie's shit. This movie's legitimately good. Um, but yeah, it, and also the, the comedy makes it just better. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I gotta say, this is probably the funniest movie I've seen since Wolf of Wall Street. I don't know if you guys would agree. Um, well, I saw 22 Jump Street, which is kind of like almost just as funny, I think. And you still need to see that. Um, I actually hear, it's, yeah, is it a good pretty, sequel? Yeah. Is it not just a rehash of one? It's a complete, yeah, it's a, it's a complete rehash of um, But it's still funny. One. Um, but it's still funny because it makes fun of the fact that it's a, it's a they literally say in the film, okay, just do the exact same thing again. Okay, well, um, at least they acknowledge it. That's kind of cool, I guess. Oh, it, it, it's complete, man. There's like a part where they actually talk about the budget. You know, <laughs> it's, it's really good. It's like, you already had a part where you, like, you know, it's like, the, the budget on this case is getting ridiculous. You already had a part of the beginning where you, yeah. smack, like, you destroyed, like, half of a docking bay. Like Why does their base look um, like something out of James Bond now? It's like because yeah yeah it's it's it's, it's, it's there's a joke about that too. Um, there's a part where like they look at his off the Ice Cube's office and they say, "Man, it's like a queue of ice." Mm-hmm. Um, I highly recommend it. It's really good. Yeah. Anyway, we're just reviewing Twenty Two Jump Street now. Yeah, no, uh, later maybe. Okay. But uh, anyway, guys, those are our thoughts on Guardians of the Galaxy and kind of the, the small future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're probably going to do another discussion video soon. Probably something DC related. Um, like mm. Henry Cowell getting his ass kicked by Ben Affleck. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, but anyway, guys, I was your host, Ivan Crollo, and these are my two compatriots here, James. We are Groot. Oh, yeah, we, we should are... say that. Together. Uh, we are... I am Groot. I am Groot. That was pretty I... good. Uh, that was really good. Um, let's take it out. Ah, 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 ah,